Hello everybody, today I wanted to share something I bumped into from Radio France. They are small podcasts, which are quite fun, I think, to use if you're a learner of French. Uh, they are aimed at 7 to 12 years old in France, so obviously probably something higher up in the hierarchy of, of learning, I suppose, if you um, don't speak French. And so it could be aimed at people taking some kind of GCSEs on an A-level, stuff like that. It's quite fun. Uh, it's based on historical figures, it's based on characters, painters, all sorts of things that I'm sure you can find something which could interest you, can get insert from your curriculum. So the aim today is to introduce this nice little podcast and do a bit of app smashing with Microsoft Word. We're going to get a transcript from uh, this uh, podcast. I'll show that before into one of my videos, but we are going to uh, use also a uh, chat GPT, which is obviously brand new and which is quite an exciting thing to, to be using for teaching. Uh, so I'll show you how to use that. Hopefully you find that interesting and enjoyable. Right, so I am in Microsoft Word Online, okay? And I need to be having this with another, uh, with my uh, podcast where I can play it. It seems that if I use the same browser, uh, it doesn't work. So here I am on Chrome and on the other side, I am on Edge, but um, anyway, I'm sure you can work it out. So we are on the Mac, so I'm gonna tie on my windows. I'll put this one to the left and that one to the right, which is here. And uh, I'm going to show you how to do that. It's one of the, the videos I've done before, but it's quite straightforward. So I'm gonna to go to transcribe. It's gonna to try to fetch some, some things I've done before. You can see I've done some stuff before. But I want to do a new transcription, so I click on OK. Right, I want to change the language. Obviously, this is going to be in French, French, France. And I will be recording in a second. First of all, I'm going to start playing my video. And I'm just going to show you just a little sample very, very briefly and, uh, and see what it works. So I'm going to start listening here. En 1622, Paris est une ville sombre. Les rues sont étroites et surtout. <laughs> Ah! <coughs> Malodorante! Heureusement, il y a toujours quelque chose à voir. Dans le quartier des Halles, au centre de la ville, la foule bondit, ça chahute! Ok, so I've done about. Uh, half of the podcast, which is over eight minutes, so you can pause it and start again. But now I'm going to save and transcribe whatever amount of things I have. Ok, it's done. Uh, right. I'm going to add it to documents. So we have just text with speakers, timestamps, speakers and timestamps. So what you probably want to hear with speakers because you have the narrator and sometimes you have characters talking. So it might not be a bad idea to add the speakers. So with speakers, and you can see that you have a huge amount of text that's been picked up. And most of the time it is really very much accurate. So from here you can see scooter. I doubt that was a scooter here. But uh, you, you've got a gist and probably you're going to have to have a little check before putting uh, things into chat GPT. The time, 95% of the time, it is absolutely correct. Here I am in chat GPT. Um, it's quite not, um, easy to create an account. Just uh, if you have a Google address or uh, um, Microsoft address Outlook, you just uh, log in with that. And it's very, very quick, very straightforward. So. Um, here I'm going to ask some questions. I'm going to be using my text. So the first question is that I've text obviously I've just got from um, the script. I say, okay. and I'm going to paste all my text. Let's see how it's going to be responding to this. There you go. It's quite straightforward. It's quite quick. Again, you notice that it's got lots of questions in English. I could have obviously had these ones on, in French, but for, for, sometimes for comprehension, it's easier to start with questions in English. I've got eight questions, okay? And maybe eight's not enough, so, so we have 10 questions. I'm just gonna be thinking about it. Okay, so that's quite, that's good. That, I think pretty good questions uh, based on, on the text and um, Molière and Jean-Baptiste Poquelin. Okay, now I've got this, and uh, how can I exploit this text again? I'm going to be asking it if potentially it could be uh, retrieving some uh, verbs uh, from 
a certain part on the text. Maybe I don't want to be using all of the text because it's a bit too complicated. So if I just uh, grab some portion of the text, let's say until faire des tartes, and I'll go back down again. Paragraph. See what we can do. Right, not quite the ten I've requested. Uh, it's going to town uh, at the moment with uh, quite a large amount of uh, of verbs. It seems to be finding all of them, even though there are a couple of mistakes. But it's kind of okay. I'm not expecting it to be a uh, hundred percent correct. So again, number forty two, forty three. Pour is obviously not at the present tense either. But again, and she'll say uh, past participle. Uh, so. It's pretty good though. You have to be quite impressed with this and he's taken all these things out and we can start building uh, maybe a an exercise with uh, some um, gaps. Let's request a gap exercise. You can see again that it's really quick and this is probably the first time I'm impressed with the fact that it's finding and creating a proper 10 gaps exercise there or oh, maybe it's not gonna have 10 it's gonna have 10 questions but not maybe more gaps but well I've tried to do that in the past it was not doing it very well and making a lot of mistakes but here I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I've got 12 gaps. Uh, but again, uh, it looks like it's all correct and they're all gaps which are linked to verbs and things like that. So it's, it's pretty good. So obviously, I'll turn to be finding it. There's no answers. Um, let's really get the answers with a magic word. And see who's going to be giving us the answer to the exercises at the same time. Wow, that is very impressive. Again, not all are the present tense uh, because we have a bit some future and stuff as immediate future, but wow, wow, wow. I also got the answers there I can pop at the bottom. So, uh, yeah. Very impressive, uh, quick work that we can use the opportunity ourselves to be uh, to be a bit more productive uh, in class. And uh, maybe a last thing. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste again all of the text from the beginning here. Pop it back here. Maybe I didn't need to do that, but I think to be on the safe side because I've diminished a little bit of paragraph to make life slightly easier. And again, lots of good suggestions here. Some stuff which is not super relevant, but on strange buildings, uh, passion, ambition, theater, actor, and writer. Well, okay. Uh, competitive nature of actors and writers in Paris at this time. Yeah, definitely based on this. Uh, the importance of the audience approval. Yeah, that's good. The harsh and the nature of the audience. Yeah, that's use, use of candles, kind of source of light. Okay. Themed of love, jealousy, betrayal, and surprise plot twist in plays. Not overly based on this paragraph, and it went a bit further down and probably knows about Moliere and things like that. But, uh, uh, but again, lots of good things that we can get from it, so we can get on with uh, some cultural elements just taken from this um, paragraph that we got from this fabulous podcast. All in all, a very impressive little demonstration of chat GPT and how we can exploit things. I'm sure there are many, many more things you can do with this. But for the small amount of time that I've just, I've just, I would have created, probably two or three lessons out of that, do some listening exercises, uh, can work in groups, 
uh, we can we can do all sorts of things. And uh, again, a, a massive help in productivity here. Obviously, we have the problem of copyrights. We created the exercise. I haven't. I can adapt it, but uh, chat GPD probably have to be uh, to be mentioned when we are using the worksheets, I suppose, which would be fair enough uh, because I'm not a creator of all this. But obviously, if I had my pinch of salt, I can just inspire from. But uh, all in all, quite an impressive demonstration.